Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we continue stories that Jesus told. I know we've been a little inconsistent with this, but we will continue to do these stories. And stories that Jesus told are parables. And parables are stories with a point. And each story that Jesus told has a very relevant point to it. And today we're in Luke 14, and uh, Jesus is talking about the cost of being a disciple of him. And so I'm going to read you from Luke 14, 25 to 33, and then just talk for a few minutes about it. A large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, If you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else by comparison, your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, Yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's that person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or what king would go off to war against another king without first sitting down with his own counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers marching against him? And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you cannot become my disciples without giving up everything you own. So I love these teachings of Jesus, and I also don't like them because they're challenging. And I want to, in a sense, skip over some of them that maybe Jesus would give us an easier way uh, to follow him versus the true way. And I love in verse 25 that it says, A large crowd was following Jesus. So Jesus was not saying this to a few people. He was saying if this to a large group of people. And this is a big challenge. And, and he turned around to this huge group of people. And most times we think that when you get a large following, that you need to, in a sense, tell those followers what they want to hear. But Jesus was not doing that. He was telling them what they needed to hear. And what they needed to hear was that the cost of following Jesus was everything. That it wasn't some things. It wasn't just something to add to your life. It wasn't like, you know, if you buy a car and you decide to add some nice performance parts to it, that Jesus is an upgrade to your life. No, following Jesus is giving up everything. And Jesus compares it and he says, if you want to be my disciples, you must hate everyone else in comparison to me. And then he talks about family, talks about fathers, mothers, wives, children, brothers, and sisters, that when you look at the people that are closest to you, compared to your love for Jesus, there is such a big difference between the two that it almost seems like you hate one and love the other. That your love for Jesus should far surpass your love for anything and anyone else in your life. So I ask you, what is it that you love the most? What is it that takes up your time, your energy, your focus? Because what you love the most will be what you follow. And Jesus is saying, your love for me should make it look like you hate everything else in comparison to how great your love is for me. Then he goes on and he says, consider the cost. Consider the cost of what it means to follow me. Don't take it lightly. Don't just jump on in. Really consider the cost of what it looks like. And I often, when I share Christ with people, I love to see people come to know Christ. And I ask people, would you like to uh, commit your life to Christ today in this moment? But also, I normally say something along the lines of, do you know what this could cost you? Do you know that you're giving your whole life over to Jesus. That this isn't simply a nice decision, but it is a life-changing decision that alters the rest of your life. And it's something that we shouldn't enter into lightly. And when we receive Jesus into our lives, 
we are saying in another way that he is taking over our lives he is the master he is the ruler he is the one who's in charge of our lives we are no longer in control and so if god asks you to do something if god tells you to go to someone if god tells you things that are challenging or uncomfortable to do we should easily respond and say okay you are the one in charge and this is the cost of following you but he talks about if somebody's building a house and doesn't finish it, people are going to laugh at them. And people are going to say, that wasn't good planning. And I've seen people start with Jesus and then at some pl place not continue with Jesus. And usually what somebody will say if somebody abandons their faith or gives up on Jesus is something along those lines of, really? Like, I knew it was just a phase. Or I knew that person wasn't going to take it serious. Or I, I knew that Jesus really wasn't worth following. Or something like that. And so we have to be aware that our lives actually affect those around us. I know when I first came to Christ, I was super excited in my early 20s. And from that excitement, it just poured over into the lives around them. And I think many people thought it was a phase. But now, 20 years later, I'm still in this phase. Because many times I considered the cost and I said that Jesus was worth following no matter what. Or as the disciples said, who else has the words of eternal life? I hold on to this life that can only be found in Christ. There's no other life that brings a satisfaction like the one that I found in Christ. And then finally, he talks about two kings going to war and one king who has less people than the other and saying, consider the cost make sure you know. And then he say, it says, you cannot become my disciple unless you give up everything you own to follow me. And there's a recognition in following Jesus that we are not our own, that we are God's purchased possession, and that everything we have, our life, our breath, our family, our finances, our job, everything is his. And so we have to freely be willing to give it back to him and say, God, I'm simply a steward. I'm simply a manager for you of the things you've given me. And God, may you help me to manage those things well and follow you first and foremost. So I hope today that you take a moment to consider the cost as Jesus called this whole large group of people to consider the cost of what it means to follow Jesus and renew that commitment to follow Jesus. It is worth it. Let me pray for us. God, I pray that you'd help us to renew our relationship with you and recognize that there's no cost too great to follow you. Jesus, you are worth it. You are worthy of all praise, honor, and you are worthy of our whole lives and everything we have and own and possess. And God, may we be people who give freely to you and then give freely to those around us. May we consider that cost in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining and may God encourage you. I encourage you to share the stories with G of Jesus with others, to read the stories of Jesus for yourself and to share your story and listen to other stories because I believe that stories have the power to change our lives. So have a great day.